Let's look at a basic one-point perspective. So why draw the one-point perspective? This type of drawing is used for a lot of things, uh, typically interior perspectives, urban perspectives, maybe some exotic compositions that you want to look very dynamic. For interiors, it, it, it's exceptionally good as it shows free walls. You don't get a, uh, a local zoomed-in perspective, you get the full feel of the, of the space. Okay, so what to draw in one-point perspective? We will draw a simple room, then fill it up with a couple of boxes. Okay, so how to draw this really, really fast? Horizon line, then uh, choose one perspective point. Obviously draw the end plane of the volume which we are drawing in perspective. Then drag back from the four points of the end plane to the perspective point, and then go forward to get the depth. The complete workflow starts now. Okay, let's go for one-point perspective the one point, one point constructed perspective. So, what are we doing here? We are doing the equivalent of a two point constructed perspective uh, interacting with a, you know, guesstimated perspective. We are building a correct skeleton of our drawing. So this isn't going to be a final drawing in itself, but it's the framework on which you build up your whole drawing. So I'm drawing now a three by five uh, free, free width, 5 depth, and 2.8 meter room. Okay, I'm doing the constructed one point perspective for that room. So, how am I doing this? I do the uh, picture plane, okay, which is a uh, frontal view inside of the room. Okay, then I put the horizon line. I'm basically drawing this picture plane at a 1 to 20 scale, so it's 15 centimeters wide, 3 meters, and it's uh, 14 centimeters uh, tall. 2.88 meters. The horizon line is again at 165, which makes it at uh, 8 something or 9 uh, centimeters. Okay, so the perspective point, the single perspective point in our one point perspective, is, on, is, is, uh, is not symmetrical. It's on the right hand side. Okay, you don't want a symmetrical perspective because that is boring. You always need to show one side more than the other. Okay, one side is going to be more interesting. If this is a kitchen, then the tabletop is at the left hand side where it's showing more. Okay, if you want to show everything, you'll end up showing nothing. Okay, that's kind of a graphics thing as well. So I've got that perspective point and I've measured the distance from the perspective point to the edge of our picture plane to the left. Okay, that long distance. And unfortunately here I've made a mistake. I've learned perspective the wrong way when I studied it a couple of years ago kind of many years ago, uh, I said, you know, you, you take that distance and you put it once and a half, okay? But unfortunately, that creates a very uh, distorted depth. It makes your image look too uh, unrealistic. It's like it's too long, elongated in a way it's long, okay? But, you know, we, we, we don't want to do that. We want it to look as accurate and close to real life as possible. So I recommend you take that measurement from the perspective point at the end of the picture plane and put it twice to the left hand side. And from that point, you just uh, pre uh, you connect that point with the bottom left corner of your picture plane. And then you, you uh, elongate that line and you intersect it with lines that go from, from the perspective point through the four corners of the room and through the divisions because those divisions are from one meter, yeah, are from one, one, one meter, okay? And if you've got that, you've got those divisions and intersect them with the, um, you know, the line from the left corner, you get spatial divisions of one meter, okay? So we got three meters, but as you see, it's not enough. We need more to create, um, you know, to display this room. So what I've done is I used diagonals to push the, the meters forward. So I've added another meter, okay? You can see there's diagonals there in the foreground, okay? Like connecting two opposite corners, the corner with the middle, and then prolongate, elongating that until it uh, touches another line. And then you've got another meter in depth. Okay, and I've let uh, just a bit out of uh, off of that um, meter, okay? Because obviously it's five meters, you don't want to show five meters, you don't want to show four meters. Let's say it's four and something. Good. So we got that. Good. And now, what are we doing? I've, I'm drawing a one, point, one by one by one meter cube. Okay, just to show how this works. 
So what, so how did I do that? I measured the one uh, one centimeter distance on the picture plane. That's five centimeters. Basically, through the perspective point, I've uh, I've, I've drawn the line. I drew I drew the line. Then I moved that forward. And then, obviously, measuring uh, in, in the plane of in the plane of plane of spatial grid, a one point one by one square. I threw in the height. Obviously, our, our cube is going to look like a square in frontal view with depth. And yeah, that is a cube that's one by one by one meters in one point perspective. Again, it's looking a bit elongated because of the uh, two unit things thing on the left. Okay, you don't want to do that. When you are drawing, it's going to look a bit flatter and more realistic. And the cast shadows are basically the same as they would be in a, a two point perspective. 60 degrees and horizontal. Good. Okay, good, good. Now we need to add uh, that part there. Another piece of, uh, you know, just a little prism. Then I'm going to make it um, look like a square as well in front of you. Okay, that 45 degree there line. You connect that, connect that there. Good. Okay, so you connect it with the perspective point. It's obviously flatter because it's closer to the, to the uh, horizon line. And yeah, again, 60 degrees and a horizontal um, cast shadows. You can draw, you can draw um, lines that are uh, objects that are in two-point perspective. Okay, you can draw them in a one-point perspective. They actually work very well to create that dynamic sense in your drawing. So it's going to look like it's more spatial. So what are we doing here? We're adding two random perspective points, and we're guesstimating how the um, the uh, obviously the cube, the box is going to look like. Uh, as a hint, you don't want um, the perspective points to be symmetrical. Again, one is on our piece of paper and one isn't, because if they're both on the same piece of, piece of paper, your image is going to look a bit um, deformed. Okay, with a spatial deformation there. Good, okay, verticals. And I have to be honest with you again, there's a small perspective mistake for that box. I don't know how I didn't notice it, but I'll correct it at the first um, occasion, which hopefully is going to, to be here soon. Okay, so 60 degrees and a horizontal. Again, we've got a cast shadow. Now the shadow looks a bit better for two point perspective, it looks a bit more dynamic. For a one point perspective, it looks a bit stiff. But uh, you know you, you don't get to use that much of uh, of the um, one point perspective for streets for you know interiors stuff that just shows three sides of a interior or like a lot of depth okay stuff like that two point perspective is the better and better of architectural drawing don't be fooled okay so we got three volumes right now in this uh, room just uh, yeah. One thing when you are drawing an interior, and I want you to, to take notes on this, you need to draw the floor. Okay, you need to draw, make the floor as, um, I mean, not as heavy as possible, but a bit darker than the other, um, the other parts of the room. So it's obvious that that's the floor. You can do that with, with reflections, with cast shadows, and obviously with hatching. And uh, when we will be doing interior design, we will be also drawing a lot of like tiles and all sorts of textures. Okay, so what, what did I do there? I used diagonals to split the length, so as to add a couple of tiles, just to add that interesting rhythm. Rhythm, That rhythm adds spatial depth to your drawing, and you want that. Okay, you always want spatial depth. Yeah, that's the tiles. Feel free to construct these lines with, uh, with confidence. You don't want to have a, a drawing with, uh, without lines. Okay, we are kind of missing some tiles there. That's fine. Okay, you can, kind of can see that rhythm that looks interesting. And the reflection on top also creates an effect. Okay, it's depth and uh, the interior and so on. Okay. Um, yeah, there's not, well, nothing more to add. Uh, again, knowing this stuff is just the basic, the basics. 
we will go and apply it for drawing a barrel bolt in perspective. It's going to be very interesting. Talk to you soon. Let's have a look at some other stuff. How could you experiment? Try sketching one point perspectives. Everything you learn now, basically just be careful with the depth of the perspective. Uh, try drawing other rooms as well, like a living room, for example, or bathroom or, or stuff like that. Experiment with barrel vaulting pavilion, the one on the right. You see it's a one point perspective, but it's quite different. It's a uh, different type of volume. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments box below. I've attached a link to this lesson and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Take care, draw nicely.